France and England in North America, Part First, Pioneers of France and the New World by Francis Parkman, 1865. Book Review. This multi-volume history of the European colonization of North America, written by Francis Parkman between 1865 and 1892, highlights the military struggles between France and Great Britain. It was well regarded at the time of publication and continues to enjoy a reputation as a literary masterpiece. However, while it is still useful in a limited capacity as an historical study, Parkman took many liberties in describing unknown and unknowable details. This has led some critics to categorize Parkman's work as belonging in the purgatory between history and historical fiction. The separate volumes and the dates of first publication are Pioneers of France in the New World, 1865, The Jesuits in North America in the 17th Century, 1867, the Discovery of the Great West, published 1869, The Old Regime in Canada, published 1874, Count Frotenac in New France under Louis XIV, published in 1877, Montcalm and Wolfe in 1884, and A Half-Century of Conflict, published 1892. The Nick Knickerbocker says in 1865, The above work from the pen of one of New England's ripest scholars, will be heartily welcomed by the reading public. Indeed, the name of the author of The Conspiracy of Pontiac is a sufficient guarantee that whatever subject is treated by him will be handled thoroughly and fairly. The distinguishing feature of Mr. Parkman's writings is the picturesque beauty with which dry historical facts are invested, while at the same time the truth to the minutest detail is strictly preserved. The notion of the old school of historians that history, to be correct, must necessarily be dull is of late years passing away, and among those American writers who had aided in bringing this about, Mr. Bancroft, Prescott, Motley, and Parkman stand preeminently in the first rank. When, moreover, the bare facts treated in the work before us are in themselves almost a romance, one can readily imagine the additional interest with which the author's glowing pencil invests them. The stern pioneer warrior with arquebus and mail, the friars with their rosaries and peaked hoods, the plumed Indian with tomahawk and gaily decorated quiver pass before us like figures in the glittering pageant of a knight, and were it not for the carefully collated footnotes which afford a sure test of the accuracy of the text, we should think it a dream of romance rather than a chapter of stern history. The period covered by this work is one of deep interest, of the influences which were at work in founding New France and of the facts themselves. Comparatively little is known. It has been the generally received impression that the halo of romance surrounding the early pioneers of the New World has been the result of this uncertainty, which a more accurate knowledge would at once dissipate. Mr. Parkman, however, proves the contrary to be the case, and clearly shows that the facts when dragged into light, increase rather than diminish in picturesque charm and coloring. France was just emerging from the bondage of feudalism. The tiers etat was struggling into life, and the free burgesses were gradually forcing the nobility, under the pleasure-loving Henry the Fourth, to relinquish their grasp upon their baronial rights and privileges. At this point, the discovery of the new world seemed to show a way of escape, and under the guise of traffic and adventure, feudalism sought to engraft upon new stocks that which was fast losing its hold upon the old. The attempts and trials, the successes and ill-successes, the sufferings and daring which ensued while this experiment was in progress, it is the object of the present work to show. The sturdy Cartier plows a path to the theater upon which the experiment is to be made. Champlain follows, and after twenty-seven years of adventurous daring and heroic fortitude in endeavoring to build up a colony, dies in Quebec, surrounded by the followers of Loyola, who, having fairly obtained a foothold, essayed to carry on the work most inauspiciously begun. At this point the present volume closes. The heroic sacrifices the follies and the virtues of the Jesuits, in carrying on the work left by Champlain being left for another volume. We are glad that Mr. Parkman designs writing the history of this extraordinary order in America, 
nor will it be questioned that its heroic deeds well entitle it to a distinct narrative its missionaries went forth unarmed and alone everywhere exhibiting the most beautiful examples of patience and self-denial and with rare exceptions gaining the confidence of even the most savage hordes whom they encountered one exception however arising in their intercourse with the savage iroquois when six of their numbers suffered martyrdom at the hands of the mohawks with the spirit of primitive apostles these were fathers jacques brubeuf lalaman daniel garnier and garot before however the close of the work already published we are allowed to catch one or two glimpses of the self-sacrificing devotion of the followers of loyola we see them now pulling with strong arms their bark canoes against the rapids of the ottawa and again elevating the host before some sylvan altar the brawny forms of the indian braves bent in rapt surprise at the strange rite to all those also who are interested in the vindication of the character of our aborigines this work of mr parkman will be received with peculiar favor seeing through the vista of fanaticism the indian whom our ancestors first encountered appears a hideous creature of cruelty and the puritan exile while he calmly burns out the tongue of a quaker for a religious difference holds up to a pious horror the savage who scalps the white ravisher of his wife the late Colonel Stone and Mr. Skullcraft were the first who became the pioneers in hewing down the prejudices that had grown up around the Indian character. Other able writers have followed them to good purpose, as the present work clearly demonstrates. It shows conclusively that whenever our aborigines have been treated simply as men, they never have failed to show their appreciation of it by their conduct. We do not remember a single instance where the whites encountered the Indians for the first time on the shores of this continent, in which they were not treated with uniform kindness and hospitality. The first act of the tribesmen of King Philip upon the arrival of the Bayflower was to tender her passengers presents of maize, and not until their claims to kind treatment were ignored and themselves wantonly spurned did they raise the defiant war-whoop against the white strangers. With the colonization of New France, the same remarks hold true, and we are pleased to see the fact brought out into bold relief upon the pages of Mr. Parkman, that the French were everywhere welcomed by the savages with open arms. Indeed, so generously was their primitive hospitality returned, that when Les Cabot, a companion of Champlain, left Port Royal on his return to France, the shore resounded with lamentation, and nothing could console the afflicted savages but reiterated promises of a speedy return. As with nations, so was it the case with individuals. And the yet fickle Iroquois, which has always been regarded so extraordinary, arose simply from the fact that they knew the magic of kindness and its potency over all, but especially over the red men of the forest. The volume which is to come after this, The Jesuit in the Wilderness, we look forward to with interest, and after a perusal of the present work, the public will not readily allow the writer to forget his promise to complete it so soon as time and health shall allow.